What is going on? Week one's finally here. John Middlecoff, Three and Out Podcast. Check out the podcast below in the description. Bills blow out the Rams. Sunday's right around the corner. Let's go. Well, where do we even start? I don't even think it's that complicated. I I was thinking of watching the game. You know, football is a very complicated sport, right? I I worked in the NFL and in college football and remember being confused constantly about blocking schemes and zone coverage. Even coaches get confused. Like, coaches are constantly learning from other coaches. And there are certain things that aren't that complicated, right? You drive by Chick-fil-A, the line. I know people that have never been to Chick-fil-A, but you can't meet a human being that is driven by it and go, God, that place is popular, right? You drive, you live in a neighborhood right now. Would you say there are Amazon boxes on basically everyone's doorstep seven days a week? Like Amazon is very popular. People use it. And it just open your eyes. If you drive by Chick-fil-A, it's like, God, that must be a good chicken sandwich. If you watch Josh Allen play, like, is he the best quarterback? I don't know. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, the back-to-back MVP, is one of the greatest players of all time, right? Patrick Mahomes has already won a Super Bowl MVP, just a remarkable player. Tom Brady is literally the greatest quarterback of all time, still kicking ass and taking names. So I don't know if he's the best player, but you don't need to be Bill Walsh. You can be my mother. You could be some random dude sitting in Iowa, in Florida. We're an international show. You could be in, uh, you know, overseas. RIP the queen. He's the most talented quarterback in the league. Physically, there is nothing like him. He moves around and runs like Cam Newton. And remember, Cam Newton, for a period of time, was one of the best players in the league. He had moments he won an MVP. I went to the Super Bowl in which he carried the Carolina Panthers, too. He never threw it like that, though. I'm 37 years old. I was born in 1984. So Elway and that draft happened basically right around the time I was zero years old when Elway and Marino came in. Now, I would say the difference between Elway and Marino, just listening to sports fans, watching YouTubes. I mean, I've met both of them, but I met them at old ages. I I never watched them in their prime. I always say as a sports fan, like, you can truly argue, if you you love it, the people you watched. Like, I'm very comfortable arguing about Barry Bonds or even Michael Jordan, who I watch younger, but definitely my era of guys, right? Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Steph Curry. You name people, Tiger Woods. Like, you have a very good feel for it. John Elway, I don't have a great feel for beside YouTubes. But everyone always talked about him like he was the great combination of talent, ability, and just the whole package, right? That's what that looks like. This guy is six foot five, can run, and now he's accurate. The knock on him, he was not accurate. Now he's eyes closed, bang, bang, boom. But unlike Matt Stafford, he's not throwing no look passes. He's hitting dudes in the hand. Now he did throw one bad pick tonight, but the other pick obviously bounced off the guy's belly. Like, that's a superstar. As the game was going on, I was thinking, like, do you know what's crazy about Josh Allen? Is his uh playoff numbers he's thrown 14 touchdowns and one interception and last year in the two games and obviously when they lost to Kansas City it was not his fault he threw nine touchdowns in two games and let's face it he worked Belichick the greatest coach of all time and went toe-to-toe and honestly outplayed or was right there or, you know slightly better than Mahomes and Andy on the road So he's going up against the best and the brightest. This is no longer a projection. You remember when Mahomes kind of crossed that threshold where it's just like, this is who Patrick Mahomes is. He's a star, uh, blockbuster every year. He's going to be an all-pro level player. Where like Justin Herbert, like we still believe that. He should go that way, but he's still on a trajectory. Like that's who Josh Allen is. An absolute ass kicker. Like that's what a Hall of Famer looks like. Now he's got a long way to go, but... If I'm a Buffalo Bills fan today, if I'm an NFL fan today, that's what I want to watch. And remember a couple years ago, Mahomes became that. Blockbuster. I used to compare Mahomes to Steph Curry. And then I think a lot of people stole my comparison. But it was pretty clear. Like, he didn't play like anyone else. That guy ain't playing like anyone else. And different from Patrick, 
who Patrick to me is like the modern day Favre. It's just fun to watch. This guy has a physical element. And think about this. No one wanted him out of high school. No one wanted him out of junior college. And coming out to the pros, I'm guilty of this as well. I thought, this is insane. He, he couldn't hit water if he was sitting in a boat in the middle of the ocean. He was so inaccurate. And the Browns passed on him. The Jets passed on him. And I give the Bills credit because I don't think there were that many teams that were thinking that this guy, obviously that, but just become a good player. A lot of people in the league think you can't teach accuracy. Well, he might be an outlier. He might not be. We'll see. There are a lot. Trey Lance is going to be a good example. There are other players that come into the league that in a, that accuracy is an issue. Now, can it improve? But I would say right now, like, that's pretty crazy. And the Bills, Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott deserve a lot of credit. But this is also why you draft character. You draft guys that love football. And you draft guys that have a chip on their shoulder. They get a guy who you don't improve that much if you don't truly care deep down in your soul. Deep down, like in everything that means anything to you, football means a ton. And you work constantly to become that good. Because what I just witnessed, I've been watching, I'm 37 years old, I've been watching football that I can remember for 27 plus years. That That's stupid. Now, the league, Elway, Montana, when the, is obviously different. It's easier on the quarterbacks in the sense of not as physical, you're not getting hit, your wide receivers don't have to worry about getting decapitated going over the middle. So it's not, you can't compare eras, but in terms of talent, like if you ever met Elway, he is a big SOB. And back in the day, he was an elite athlete. And I, I don't know if he was doing that, but what I'm seeing that guy doing, it's like, holy moly, running like Cam, throwing like Brady. I mean, geez, Lord. the Bills are a rocket ship as long as that guy is on the field. And the other kind of shining star tonight had to be Vaughn Miller. And just it, it, just Vaughn Miller on one, one you know side to it is just an all-time great player. He had a sack tonight that the uh, left tackle didn't touch him. The I think it was the blocking back or the tight end that was there to help did not touch him. And he sacked Matt Stafford. It is stupid how good he is. I once worked with a guy who then became a general manager that might have had a second-round grade on him. No names. No names. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. But he was a can't-miss player at a Texas A&M, and he is coming to the NFL, and he's a first-ballot Hall of Famer. But I'm going to pump the brakes a little bit. Like, we've seen Von Miller do this. We saw when he resurrected his season last year when he got traded. To me, the key for this signing to work, because I did believe that the amount of money the Bills gave him was pretty crazy a guy over the 30-year-old hump who's had major injuries and to give him $50-plus million guaranteed, I thought was pretty bold. I, I thought that was a pretty big swing. And I've heard Brandon Bean talk about it. They thought they were a piece away. And they are one of the rare teams that didn't win the Super Bowl last year that can truly say we're a player or two way. Now, if he plays like that 80% of the time, you know, the Bills are, they already were a Super Bowl contender. They're probably the favorite. I mean, if they're, if they're going to have that Von Miller, but let's, let's face it. When you're 32, 33, like that's not going to happen every game. And he's probably built more indoors. Like the Bills actually are the perfect indoor team. But they play outdoors in the element. The colder it gets, your older body. They just have to get that level of play in December, January, and early February. If they can get that level of Von Miller, like they don't need that every week, obviously. But if they can get that when it really matters, hell, maybe even December, they might have the division set in stone. Get that guy in the playoffs. You know, I, I think the Bills, to me, the Bills, you know, probably in the, in the Chiefs would be the two favorites to win it until someone knocks off the Chiefs. The other thing I was thinking back to Josh Allen, the Bills' greatest advantage right now, I mean, truly their greatest advantage, because ultimately you play six of your 17 games, your divisional games. And for, you know, 20 years, Tom Brady, we were always saying like, you know, he gets to play the AFC East. Look at the quarterbacks. Miami always has a new quarterback. The Jets never have a quarterback. And until Josh Allen, the Bills definitely never had a quarterback. A couple years with Fitzpatrick, but for the most part, no quarterback. And Brady and Belichick beat the living shit out of them. It felt like, I don't know the percentage, but I would guess, if, if I just had to ballpark guess 19 plus years, divisional games, the Brady played 80% winning percentage, it had to be really high. Well, think about this. And I know quarterbacks don't necessarily play each other, but they kind of do. Like, the quarterback you have versus the quarterback I have is, like, that's a like usually the better quarterback. Like, I feel I have an advantage. 
they don't just have the better quarterback in the adva- in, in the division. It's a Grand Canyon wide gap. I mean, they got Josh Allen, who's clearly, I mean, he's one of the most talented quarterbacks we've ever seen. But currently in 2022, he's one of the best players in the league against Mac Jones, a very average talent, Tua, who I'm not sure is any good, and Zach Wilson, who is injured and honestly was trending, you know, it's not trending in a great, you know, direction. So the Bills, like, as long as that guy stays healthy, they're winning the East every year. Like, that's set in stone. Now, on the flip side, defending champs, first and foremost, that that building is remarkable. Got to go into it last year. It is, if you ever get a chance, if you're in Los Angeles, listen, people talk some crap about California, including myself, and I'm a 35-year uh, resident of it. I've always been a homer for Northern California. Southern California is better. They, they got the ocean. Uh, they got the better weather. And if you go to the right places, it's sweet. And when you go to that building, and listen, you know, the 49ers play in Levi's, it kind of sucks. <laughs> that building, I've been to Jerry's Palace, is the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. It is cool. I'm not giving the Rams necessarily a pass, but whatever. Like, they're going to be good. They're going to be fine. They're going to be a playoff team. To me, the, the story of the night, Sean McVay is one of the best coaches in the league. First time he's lost in six seasons is his first opening game loss. Like, they'll be okay. But like Matt Stafford, who I will also give somewhat of a pass, given that his practice time was limited because of the injury. I do think it's fair to say, like, he plays a little loosey-goosey. I remember last year, I kind of crushed him after a game because he was throwing picks. He throws interceptions. Now, ultimately, they overcame it, and he was pretty good in the he was really good in the playoffs. He did throw a late pick that was dropped against the 49ers that would have cost them the Super Bowl. But ultimately, I've always liked Matt Stafford, and I can live with the picks because I get the big plays. Tonight, we didn't. Now, when you're going no-look passes, and I remember, you know, listen, Mahomes has done this too. I have no problem doing a no-look pass here and there. There's another thing doing a no-look pass into, like, tight coverage over the middle of the field. Like, what are we doing? You know, I mean, this is, you're playing the Bills. You're not playing the, the Jags here. You're playing a team that might go to the Super Bowl and win it. And you're throwing no-look passes, we're being, getting a little cute here. Like, if I'm Sean McVay, I know Sean McVay is probably not going to MF Matt Stafford, but on that play in front of the team, like, the millennial version of lighting them up, because that's kind of ridiculous. And when you play like that against really good teams, and he is inclined to throw interceptions, like Josh Allen threw a real, he threw two picks tonight. One was real, one was not. Matt Stafford is more inclined to throw a bunch of real picks, picks that hit guys in the hands. He got fooled on the one play, and the other, again, the no-look pass, I just, I can't get my arms around. Like, that's just, I, I, and listen, you know, Steph Curry does it sometimes, right? If you watch the Warriors play, he will have passes that hit the dude that's paying $1,500 for a second-row seat right in the head. The difference is Steph Curry dominates. Like, Matt Stafford has games where he's doing this, and he did consistently last year. Remember he had a stretch last year of three or four games where I think he threw eight picks or he accounted for, like, ten turnovers, fumbles, and interceptions? Like, that will be the one reason that the Rams do not compete to win the NFC. Because let's face it, the AFC where the Bills play, a lot more difficult. The Chiefs, the Ravens, obviously the Bengals, the AFC West. Like, it's, it's hard. It is very, very hard. The NFC... Like, Tom Brady, is is he going to quit? Is Giselle going to move back in? What, what's going on there? Uh, you know, the 49ers, we'll see the quarterback situation. You know, uh, the Green Bay Packers, who's Aaron throwing, dude? Like, it's it's pretty wide open. But if Matt Stafford, if Matt Stafford played a little more in control, I think the Rams would be the heavy favorite. But he doesn't. So when he doesn't, like, ultimately, the, Ram, the Rams can get got. And I, I would say that, of all the defending champs who are still really good, they would be the type team that, like, yeah, it wouldn't shock me if they lost in the first round. You know? And it's, it has no, like, that's not a, uh, that, that doesn't reflect Sean McVay, like how highly I think of him. That reflects Matt Stafford and his inclination and to throw the ball to the other team. It's not a referendum on their operation. They're high level. But ultimately, they go as he goes. And last year, the Ravens game, the Titans game, did something just come to my mind, the Niners game, when he throws the ball to the other team, they, they can lose, especially to good teams. And that's who typically beats them when Stafford's throwing the ball like that. But fun night, uh, even though it was a little bit of blowout in the second half, it's good to have football back. 
and uh, hope everyone has a good night. Adios.